All right. Oh How's the boss treating you? Yeah, we find him having some few smiles. He seems to be a, a big fan of yours now for some reason. <laughs> Who's yeah. that? You. Oh no, I'm you're not, not a big I'm fan. I'm not a fan of any of the, my employees. You know that. If you are, you have to pay them more. <laughs> exactly. If I, if I <laughs> okay, listen. Before before we get going, we're gonna go for a ride, me and you, Mo. Right? Yes. Matt, I wanted to talk to you about the plastic thing. You've been yep. doing years of, of um, we were you've been conscientious for years. We've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. 20 years. Yeah, more than that. What's what's changed now in, in, since, I mean, since it's passed, is anything going to change for you? Do, you? do you feel like you have to bump it up even further now, or how do you feel about that? I don't think so. I mean, mm -hmm. we may we may swap out, uh, the, we'll have to swap, swap out plastic bottles for glass, right. but other than that, I think we're pretty, we're pretty good. I mean, what about plastic bags? Plastic Are you bags. waiting for that to, to, to be offered to? Yeah, we. I spoke to one of the suppliers, one of the well, actually a production company out in the Midwest, and they are probably still three to five years away for bread. They're using okay. plastic bags for beets and potatoes, and they're made out of beets and potatoes, yeah. but they're not used for bread yet. The early plastic that they had was garbage. It was uh, it was plastic held together by corn, so it just broke into a bunch of small plastic pieces in the end. So some of the stuff that we thought was a good thing and the bags we thought were no good. But when they break down into corn, they, they break down too quickly. Well they, well, they break down quickly if it was well, the early ones, it was just corn. Yeah. But they were also making them out of corn and plastic and calling them biodegradable. Oh. So then they were basically just breaking down quicker. I don't know if you read this. I just put it on Facebook. 90% of table salt has microplastics in it now. Yes. That is... I know. Well, but here, are we, here's what I thought about this morning on that, though. Right. What other stuff does it have in it? Sure. You know, I bet you there's a bunch of other stuff in there. I'm not, and I'm not supporting know. plastic, but I bet you there's I a mean, bunch of other stuff that we don't really want to eat either. I mean, we've got climate change to deal yes. with. Yes. And this to deal with, and we need to. The get interesting part for me is the whole straw campaign. I replaced straws 25 years ago. Yeah. And and it's a, it was on the books, and it was a requirement 25 years ago. So to act, you know, so and I tease Rita. I think she's done a great job, you know, raising awareness and bringing the movies here and things. And it's very interesting, you know. So you need to have both. Sure. But it's very interesting. It hasn't, you know, in my mind, maybe I missed something, maybe I missed the memo, but in my mind, all of this was illegal 25 years ago. Well, the government, say what you will, but the government has to get behind this. They have to get behind movement. it, and they have, you know, the, the, the big government, our little oh, yeah, government has no, to, no, and the big government has to. Of course, to. the yeah. entire government, yes. the United States government has to get behind it. Completely, right. 100%. Okay, buddy. Mo, uh, Mo, right? Yes, Jim. Mahato. So, Mahato. Mahato. Yes. <laughs> now, now, just briefly, just set this up for me before we go for a ride, because he's going to tell me a lot more about right. it. But how did you guys meet? Uh, Mah Mahato was, <laughs> it's actually an unbelievable story. His visa ended up shipped to me. And so it came in in the middle of the winter. I stuck it in a drawer and forgot about it. And I got a call that, you know, June or July, I don't know when it was, the beginning of the summer, and, and this, you know, African guy, because I could tell by his voice, called and said, hey, do you have my visa? And I'm like, what visa? What, what, wait a minute, I think I have it. And I go, what's your name? And of course, I couldn't pronounce his name. And I looked, and there it was. It was in my drawer. I go, yeah, I have it. Want me to send it to you? And he went, well, okay. And he started telling me his story and what he was doing in New York and having a hard time finding work. And we were having a hard time finding drivers and bakers because we were having trouble with some of our past employees. And I said, hey, you want to come out and learn to bake? He was here. I talked to him that morning at like 8 or 9 in the morning. He landed at 5 that night. No one has ever gotten here that quickly. I don't know how he did it. It was great. It was amazing. And he's, and he's been here pretty much ever since. That's terrific. Do you use a lot of people? For, do you feel like you really need to bring in people from other countries? I mean, does it really help? It, we, we don't use as many now. We get a lot of interns. But what it, where it helps is it's... Uh, it helps the dynamic to have people from all over the world. Like so, we hire now partly because you need to cover the shoulder seasons because the American kids can't do it or won't do it, no matter what you pay them. But it's also 
you end up with, uh, and we've got some great American kids. I'm not like, I understand. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I'm disagreeing with yeah, you. Right. I don't think you're right. people yeah. will. Yeah, all right. I, I just want to make sure. Question for you but, but, but we found, though, it's great when these guys get to meet people from different walks of life from all over the world. They go and they visit each other, they become best friends, they go to each other's weddings 10 years from now. It's Doesn't incredible. It, make a, it makes a huge difference as our country. So we learn about other people and then we might have a better understanding. It does. Um, since uh, our new president, have have you seen uh, any decline in the prospects and opportunities oh. for you to get people here? Oh, completely. completely. It's, it's a mess. Yeah. Normally what would happen is you would get a Republican president and it would get a little easier on the immigration because they were trying to help business. And then you get a Democrat and they would make it harder. And they would make it harder on you because they were supporting the unions. And they, so they, they had the union vote, so they'd make it really difficult and they'd tighten it up. And, and Trump has just been a complete wild card. He's gone in and he's blaming things, you know, blaming immigrants for things that uh, I don't think there's any chance they do. He's just he's just riling up his base. He's scaring everybody. He's, he's riling up his base. Voting for him. Completely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a scare tactic. Yeah. It was. I, mean, one, well, I hope people can figure this out soon, sooner than later. Though. Well, it's, a, uh, it's fascism. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. splitting people up. You know, that's the definition of fascism. Yeah. Splitting them into groups and then, you know, I, I just think it's crazy. Yep. So, and, all right. And I know you agree. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out all about Maybe it. Maybe he Let's doesn't. Go for a drive. You ready? Okay, I'm ready for Thanks, the drive. Man. Bring Bring him back. I'll we need, him we back need him tomorrow. Week. Oh, yeah, tomorrow he's See working. See you later. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay yeah, you've got your drink with you. Yes. Okay, good. All right, here we go, huh? <laughs> here we what, go. <laughs> so what country are you from in Africa? Uh, I'm from Lesotho. Lesotho. Lesotho is uh, in southern part of Africa. Yeah. Right. Actually, it's landlocked by South Africa, so it's existing within another country. Uh, yeah, we speak English and uh, our own language called Sesotho. Mm -hmm. And then in South Africa, Sesotho is part of the 11 official languages too. So the accent is almost the same. How did you even get a chance to come to the United States? Okay. Uh, uh, I must say, I'm just, uh, I grew up as an ambitious person, just an ambitious guy. So growing up, I just had this idea that uh, someday I would like to live abroad. It could be Britain, it could be United States. So the moment came when I was in Cape Town, I was in college and I was doing my second year in electrical engineering. And then I was just like, you know what, I just want to do this. I've been thinking about it and I think it's time I do it. So I heard about uh, this uh, diversity lottery visa that uh, the United States government offers. What year was this? This was uh, 2005. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so I started applying. It, it's actually online for applications every year. It's still going on it's now. still going? Yes. Well, that's so, good, right? It hasn't changed at all? No, it hasn't changed, but... Uh, but he wants to change it. The president he's wants been, it. He's been talking about it, that uh, people right. who got it uh, tend to make chain migration, so we don't know what's going to happen to the program, but for now it's still on it's still working mm -hmm. so i started applying in 2005 and I, I i thought i was gonna get it almost immediately because uh, other countries migrate a lot and they have a lot of applications but from my country it's hardly five applications a year so each country is open for 50,000 visas they say we can they can take 50,000 from each country to fill up uh, the, the program for that country. After 50,000 people, they cannot take any more from that country. Like countries like China, they are not taking any more people on that program from China now. Mm -hmm. So no one is applying from my country, so I thought it was gonna be easy. Okay. But uh, it just dragged on and on. I only got it on the 2010 lottery 
I applied from 2005 for the next five years. Yeah. Each year they open it once a year in October. And it's a lottery. Yes, it's a lottery. All right, so, so 2010 came. 2010 came, and then I got a letter, hey, you have been chosen for further processing. So they sent me to Johannesburg uh, for oral interviews and stuff and to present my credentials. And uh, it all went from there, I got the visa. So this is how I actually ended up in Nantucket. Uh, this is my seventh year. Oh, it is in your Nantucket. seventh year. Yes. Oh, okay. Got so it. I, I, I got here in 2011 in March. Okay, to Nantucket. No, in New York. In oh, the in States. New York. Yes. Okay. My first, uh, my first place. But you've been working for Matt V for, for how seven, long? Yes. Okay. Same year. Got I, it. I came here in June. I came to New York and I couldn't get a job for four months. And but even though you got the lottery, you won the lottery, you couldn't get a job? I got the paperwork, I had uh, my passport was saying I could work, but I was all over the city, but I couldn't get Who were you staying job. with then? How um, did you live? Actually, I got, uh, I got an apartment before I came here with a friend that I met on Facebook. Okay. I, I, I went online when I realized I was about to come over and started searching We're for We're talking people. New York now, right? Yes. Okay. I started searching for people online that could be from my country. I see. And then I got this guy who said, hey, I have an apartment. I'm actually looking for a roommate. So immediately when I landed at JFK, he came over and took me in and I started living with him. So I had oh, saved a uh, few bucks yeah. that uh, could pay rent. Yes. And uh, at the end of four months, I was actually out of money. I was about to go back home when uh, I met Matt Fee. You were getting desperate for a job. You needed to find some sort of work, but... I had actually, I was about to give up. I was saying, Why weren't okay, you able to find a job in New York though? Uh, I guess uh, I was looking in wrong places. I see. Because uh, nobody what tells you. What were you, you looking? I mean, you were, if you took a job with Matt Fee doing baking, you Nobody you obviously tells you what to expect when you come here. It's just, hey, you got a visa. Uh, yeah, you're on your own. You're on, you're on your own. So I came and uh, I started looking for electrical work because uh, Prior to the electrical engineering, I had done electrical installation. I see. Which I, I graduated. So I am actual, I was actual an electrician back home. Nobody said to me, hey, this is United States. You have to pick up anything that comes across and take it from there. Right. So I looked and looked and nothing came up. All right.